Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we will go over my strategy on how to optimize renders. This methodology should broadly be applicable to other render engines, but of course I'll be demonstrating with Redshift. Many times I leave my render preset alone, but on the odd occasion I do need to change something, this quick tip will show the strategy that I use. We start up our render view and send the current render to the picture viewer. This is where we'll store different renders, renaming them to take notes, and making changes one at a time to evaluate the effect on either render speed or render quality. So that's the overall technique. Let's see it in practice. I did most of these examples as full frame renders, but if you do this, consider doing a region render instead if you need the tests to go a bit faster. If you leave the render region consistent between each setting change, you can extrapolate the difference in render time for your full frame renders. So it's pretty handy. We'll begin with our base render, which uses the render settings I outlined in my render settings preset tutorial. So if you're curious about some of these settings, please give that a watch and check back. Now I've been working on this scene for a little while, and then I got the idea to add in some redshift environment fog. And we can see that result here. And this looks quite nice, but I know that when I zoomed in, there's a fair amount of grain up in this corner when I compare against the version that had no fog. So this is when I would start to follow this testing methodology when I see that there's a bit of grain, and I've got a hunch that I'll be able to resolve that grain. Now, taking a look, I've got a list of these pre-rendered demonstrations and some render settings to correspond with them. Now, I typically don't do this over here. I'll just make my changes within one preset, but feel free to try this out if you like this method. Now, Redshift includes an auto sampler, which can remove some of the complicated unified sampling settings in exchange for speed and ease of use, although I find it still has some issues when there's glass or lots of depth of field, so I don't rely on it. It is worth testing out, though, because periodically the devs improve it. So I continued my testing methodology, and I turned on the volume override because I had the feeling that this grain that was up in this corner here would be able to be resolved. But in general, we can see that this is cleaning up a fair bit of noise in the character body here. So I got the feeling that I wanted to use both the volume and the light overrides. The next set of frames are some quick experiments going over different sampling, threshold, min, and max values. We don't have to spend too much time on these, but by zooming in, we can begin to see what effect each sampling change does or doesn't have on our render. The next point I want to highlight is the effect that bucket size can have on render speed. Again, broadly speaking, larger buckets ought to render faster, but they do require more memory, which may or may not be a good thing depending on the specific types of scenes you work on and the hardware that you have available. Last thing to cover will be the optimization sampling cutoffs. I mentioned these in my render settings preset video, so these last two entries in our picture viewer are based around this main setting, only changing the sampling cutoff value. Now on the surface, this doesn't look too different, but zooming in, I know where to check for grain, and against this character is the most obvious area. So again, these are my modified cutoffs, and these are the default cutoffs. So just know that by changing these cutoff thresholds, you will introduce a bit of grain into your render, but the speed improvement is quite substantial, so please adjust this based on how comfortable you are with grain in your render and whether or not you like to denoise. Again, I like using Neat Video in After Effects. It's quite a great plugin and it gets the job done for me. And that will cover everything for this tutorial today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you found this beneficial, please consider liking, sharing, or subscribing.